What is the difference between mean absolute deviation, or MAD, and standard deviation? In this lesson, you will learn the difference between MAD and standard deviation by calculating each. Let's review. Typically, a measure of center and a measure of spread are used to describe a set of data. The mean and mean absolute deviation are paired together to describe data sets, or typically those sets represented by line plots and histograms. The median and interquartile range are often used for sets of data or data represented by a box plot. I don't want to forget about the range, but it's important to know that in higher level statistical analysis, the range is used less frequently in favor of other measures of spread, mean absolute deviation, or interquartile range. And in fact, in this lesson, we will see that those same higher level statistics will use standard deviation in place of MAD. I will analyze data for 10 years worth of aluminum recycling as I look at the change from mean absolute deviation to standard deviation. Let's look at the calculation for MAD so that we can compare it to that of standard deviation. I have my data in a table to help organize my calculations. The first column reports the data, the second column is the mean, and the third column is the difference as the absolute value between the mean and the reported daily tons. To find the mean absolute deviation, add the distances together and divide by 10. For this data, the sum is 53.2 divided by 10 equals 5.3, so my MAD is 5.3 tons. I'm going to run you through the calculation for standard deviation. However, please resist being overwhelmed. More often than not, a calculator will do the tedious work for us. This is a great example of when the use of technology is appropriate. Okay, let's look at the calculation for standard deviation. I find it easier to calculate by organizing my data into a table. However, I've hidden all but the first data values so we don't see too many numbers in front of us. So first find the distance from the mean, just like in mean absolute deviation. Then you'll square the distance from the mean by multiplying the distance by itself. Then you'll add all the square distances to get 488.9. Next, find the mean of the square distances by dividing the sum by 10, which gives me 48.89. Finally, take the square root of 48.89, which is 6.99. Why square root the mean? Well, remember, we are determining a measure of spread. Our units of measure are tons. When we square the distances from the mean, we get tons squared, which makes no sense when analyzing data. Let's take a look at how MAD and standard deviation both show a measure of spread about the mean using the histogram. The mean is highlighted in pink, while plus or minus one standard deviation is highlighted in blue, as well as indicated above with brackets. Below the histogram, I have indicated the MAD. The standard deviation is always slightly higher than the MAD due to squaring of the distances early in the calculation. Both the MAD and the standard deviation tell how compact the data is around the mean. The shift from MAD to standard deviation happens between sixth grade and high school. In this lesson, we looked at the calculation differences between MAD and standard deviation, and now here is a simple explanation of why we have to make that shift. First of all, we always start with the mean, and in sixth grade, you were introduced to a simple measure of variance known as MAD. It was a quick calculation showing how data varies about the mean. However, in higher level statistics, there is a need for a more complex calculation which deals with the negative distances resulting from finding the distance from the mean. In this lesson, you have learned the differences between MAD and standard deviation by calculating each.